Hey guys, it's Max with Max Tech. We have been getting a lot of questions about what exactly is upgradable on the Mac Pro. So today, we're not only gonna tell you what's upgradable, we're actually gonna show you how to do it and also let you guys know which parts are compatible and what we would recommend just a little bit on later in the video. Now we have right over here a new graphics card that we're gonna be adding in. We have extra storage that we're gonna add in and some accessories and tools that we need to do it. Everything is also linked down in the video description. Apple made it extremely easy to open up the Mac Pro. All you have to do is make sure it is unplugged, twist the top, and pull the whole casing off, and it automatically disconnects the power supply um, internally to make sure everything is safe. So that is great. And we're gonna start off with probably the easiest upgrade, and the upgrade that I would recommend to almost everybody, and that is to install your own RAM. And we already made a full RAM upgrade guide along with a lot of recommendations for different use cases. So we'll go ahead and leave a link to that in the video description. But just to show you guys how, you press down on this little lock and then these little plastic covers come right out. In here, I have 192 gigabytes of RAM that we upgraded ourselves, and this cost me just under $700 compared to Apple, which charges $3,000 for this upgrade. And it is extremely easy to do. Just like that, you pull it out, and then as long as you have it aligned properly, just push down, and it is locked in. Next, let's talk about the SSDs, and this is where it gets a little bit disappointing. Now, yes, the SSDs can be removed. It is really easy to do so. I'll show you guys exactly how. I'm gonna take off this top cover, and I'm gonna squeeze this uh, fan port down to unlock it. You just wanna be a little bit careful. And then we're gonna push on this front cover and then at the same time, you just wanna lift straight out. That way you make sure you don't break any clips or anything like that. We can set that aside. And then right here, we're gonna pull out the SSD cover. And right under the cover, we see our two SSDs that run in RAID 0. And you just unscrew them and remove them. Now, as you can see, this SSD is tiny. There are other SSDs that are similar form factor, but the actual connector here is proprietary. So at least at this time, you can't go out and buy an SSD like this. Now it goes even further uh, because these SSDs are actually linked to the T2 chip inside of the system for security purposes, meaning that if somebody steals your system, they won't be able to just unplug them and plug them somewhere else and take your data. But the unfortunate part is that you will not be able to upgrade this by yourself. You're gonna have to go to an Apple store and have them upgrade it and link it to the T2 chip. But don't worry, you could still add more storage to your Mac Pro by yourself. You could save money or even get storage that is two to three times faster. I'll explain exactly how and also show you. But first, a huge thanks to our sponsor, Micro Center, for making our Mac Pro content possible. Micro Center has 25 stores nationwide with an impressive variety of electronics, from gaming, VR, computer parts like processors, graphics, and everything else needed to build or upgrade a PC or Mac. Micro Center has been an authorized dealer since 1980. They have a dedicated Apple department with highly trained Apple sales associates. Aside from iPhone, Micro Center carries the full lineup of Apple products, and they have the largest selection of third-party parts and accessories. Come into a local Micro Center today and talk to one of their Apple experts to order the specific Mac Pro configuration that best suits your needs. Check the link in the description to find a local Micro Center near you or to browse their large selection of Apple products. So how do you go about adding extra storage to your Mac Pro? Well, Apple does sell an MPX module that has a huge RAID system, but that is very expensive. And they also have a caddy that you can plug in right up here that will hold two regular hard drives. But apart from that, you can actually add in your own SSDs, even ultra fast M.2 SSDs, with an, a PCI card like this. Now the Mac Pro has a ton of PCI slots and even with our Afterburner card and one of these huge MPX modules, we still have a lot of ports left over. And one of these cards will only need a 4X port so you can plug it in here at the top. And as you can see, once we open up the little case screws and insert this PCI M.2 adapter and turn on our Mac, it shows up right there on the desktop and then we can format the SSD and use it just as extra space. Now this card right here just holds a single M.2, but you can actually get them uh, to that support two of them and even up to four M.2s and that can actually make use of a full 16X slot, meaning if you put it in the fastest slot, you can get speeds of up to 10,000 megabytes per second. Now we haven't personally tested out this card just yet, but somebody did say that they ran it under macOS. 
uh, but you just want to make sure that whatever you get is listed to work with Mac OS. And this one right here, we'll link it in the video description, works out of the box without having to do any drivers. Now, a lot of you guys also asked us about a host of different cards, from audio cards to a lot of different add-in components. And uh, all of those should work just fine as long as you meet two different things. Either it has to be supported with Mac OS, or you have to be able to have drivers that you can download and install to support whatever card you're adding into PCI Express lot. And then the other thing you gotta make sure is that you have a way to power it. Now this card right here doesn't need additional power, but there are some cards that do need it. And the Mac Pro doesn't have a regular set of power cables coming out of the power supply. Everything is going through the motherboard. So right here, I have a Belkin power supply cable kit that plugs into the custom power supply ports. And uh, right now it's mainly set up to support either six or eight pin cards, a lot of which are graphics cards. Um, but I think in the future we might have some other cables to give us maybe Molex or SATA power. Now let's talk about graphics cards. In the system, we have the Radeon Pro Vega 2 graphics card, and that is the first upgrade from the base 580. The problem is this graphics card costs $2,400, and that is a whole lot of money. But you can add in graphics cards yourselves. Even with this graphics card installed that takes up four slots and the afterburner card, we still have two 16X PCI slots here. So I could add in two very powerful graphics cards in addition to the system and still have two more slots available for extra storage, other plugging cards, stuff like that. So right now, let me show you exactly how we put this in. Apple makes it extremely easy to remove some thumb screws right over here. You can use a screwdriver if you would like to, but it's not required. And then on the left hand side, you do need a Phillips screwdriver to remove the little cover that holds all of the graphics cards in. Next, we're gonna go up here to the top and we're gonna toggle the MPX module lock. And now at the bottom of your included graphics card, you press down, which will reveal this little lever, and then that allows you to pull out the whole graphics card. Now, just like you pulled that one out, you can insert this one into the bottom slot. Make sure it aligns properly with the PCI Express connector, and then you can push down. And you can actually put the graphics card into any of the 16X slots or even the 8X because most graphics cards will work just fine in those slots. I'm going to grab two of the 6 to 8 pin cables from the Belkin power cable kit. And then right here next to the graphics card, we're going to plug in the smaller connectors into the motherboard and then the larger connectors into our graphics card. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the video description on Apple's article on the graphics cards that are supported in this system. Now let's take a look at the CPU and yes, you can upgrade your processor yourself, not only in the future, but you can actually upgrade your processor right now and save some money. So to do so, I'm going to go ahead and remove the afterburner card just to have easier access to our CPU. And right underneath, we have two screws that hold the CPU cover, then we'll pull that off and expose the heatsink. Now to unscrew the heatsink bolts, we need a T15 wrench, which is slim and at least four and a half inches long, or else it won't fit. We'll go ahead and leave a link to one in the video description. You do have to apply quite a bit of force, but don't worry, as long as it's seated properly, it will work. And you wanna make sure you don't unscrew the first bolt all the way. Just loosen up a bit and then go back and forth between them to evenly remove it. And to finish, remove the two bolts that are at the top holding the heatsink to the chassis and make sure to hold the heatsink so it doesn't just fall down after it's unscrewed. If you're gonna be installing a new CPU, you wanna make sure you clean this off with alcohol and clean off your new CPU before applying more thermal paste. Now for this part, you wanna be extremely careful and it's best to lay the Mac Pro down. We're just keeping it up for video recording purposes because you can very easily bend a pin on the CPU. So there you have it. You could see that yes, the CPU is socketed and it is upgradable. Now I don't think a lot of people are gonna be upgrading their CPU right off the bat. I think most people are gonna be waiting two, three, four, five years down the line and then upgrading. And at that time, the CPUs are gonna get much less expensive. For example, right now Apple is charging $7,000 for that 28 core. And I think that three years down the line, you should be able to buy one for about $1,500. So that is a massive savings to get extra performance later, which is a huge benefit with the Mac Pro. And if you don't 
believe me, the previous Mac Pro had a 12 core processor that Apple charged $3,500 for, and now you can actually buy one for $190 that's slightly faster than what Apple offered, and it works perfectly fine. Now, if you want the ultimate performance right now, there's also another 28 core processor that's just slightly slower. It fits in the same socket, and that one actually performs better than Apple's 28 core processor because it has a faster base clock speed. Now, there is one caveat with that CPU, and that's that it runs in four channel memory, just like the eight core, and it's limited to 512 gigabytes of RAM, but I think that's enough for most people. And you can get that processor right now for $3,000. So that's a savings of 4,000 minus being able to resell your eight core. So you can definitely get some great deals on performance if you're willing to swap out your processor yourself. All right guys, so our Mac Pro is now upgraded. We added in a couple different things. We have extra RAM in here. And one thing you may notice is that we don't have our LG 5K display. This is a 4K and that is because we found something out. If you remove the MPX graphics card, the Thunderbolt 3 ports at the top of the Mac Pro and on the back side, they no longer work to support a 5K or a 6K XDR display. That means if you want to use a Thunderbolt 3 display, you're going to have to keep one of those MPX graphics card modules in. Now right over here, we can see that we have our Xeon processor. We installed it back in. It works perfectly fine. We have 192 gigabytes of RAM right here. It's running at the full speed. You guys can see the slots. And we also have our additional storage. So I added in that PCI M.2 adapter with that NVMe SSD. And then we also have, if we go to PCI slots, we're using up the bottom slot, just that 16X. And we have our 5700 XT AMD graphics card. And we also ran the performance test here. This is Geekbench 5's metal score. We got about 43,000. Now, another thing that came up is the fact that uh, some of these display ports were not working properly or as well as they should have. They're running at 4K 30 Hertz. Now, only one was outputting 60 Hertz. And then if you're plugging into a port that isn't putting out the full performance, uh, then we actually saw about a 15% loss in Geekbench 5's metal score. You guys can see it right there. So I think that is a driver issue. This is the newest, latest AMD graphics card that is released that is supported. So hopefully the drivers get updated so all those ports work properly. Now I have another little bonus for you guys that stuck around. We just got in two of these uh, Radeon 7 70 nanometer graphics cards with 16 gigs of HBM2. So let's go ahead and pop one of these in here and see what kind of performance we get. So not only did we install one of those Radeon 7s, I also put in a Vega 64 to see how they compare and here are the results with the Radeon 7 we have almost 46,000 metal score which is really quite low I was, I was expecting it to be much higher than that because our Radeon Vega 2 graphics card that gets about 86,000 that's a massive difference in performance for the Vega 64 that actually did quite a bit better 57,841 but still not as good as it should be so so that leads me to believe that the drivers that are designed for these graphics cards are not utilizing them to the full potential. The clock speeds and memory clock speeds are not as high. Hopefully AMD is able to release their own macOS drivers that will optimize their graphics cards if you add them in yourself. At this point, Apple is in control of all of that and it seems like they're pushing out the full potential to their own graphics MPX modules, but these other graphics cards are not running as fast as they could. So at this time, if you wanna upgrade if you don't need more than eight gigabytes of video memory, I would suggest a Vega 64 because we are getting the best performance with that. And then uh, if you do need more than that, go for the Radeon 7. If you don't need that much performance, if you're doing simpler tasks, that 5700 XT is actually the latest graphics card is performing almost as good as the Radeon 7 and it has better encoding options with the new encoder that's built into there. And of course it is much less expensive. Keep in mind that this is just one benchmark and we are gonna be doing a comparison between the 24 $100 upgrade option for the Vega 2 compared to these other graphics cards to see how they compare in the real world because there is a massive difference in price between them. So there you guys have it, everything that you can upgrade on the Mac Pro, how to do it, and our recommendations on what you should get from Apple and what you can do yourself with which parts are the most worth it. Let us know if you have any questions down in the comment section below and click right above to subscribe so you guys don't miss out on other videos. And we also have links in the video description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.